because of the whole reggae sound system thing, you're talking about when it comes to reggae music and Jamaican culture, you you're talking generations. Mm -hmm. So it's deep rooted yeah. in the blood and soul. So when people come to deal with music, they mean it. It ain't a fad, man. Yeah. It's something real that you dedicate your life to. People are dead over this music. Mm -hmm. They love for this music. And people people come and bring life over this love of this music. So this is a real something. When the hip hop came, we recognized real straight away. We recognized the dedication. We recognized the fact that these kids is going on road, on lino, on concrete, going outside and they don't give a damn what you think. <laughs> It's rebel, this is a rebel culture. It says some rebellion music as well. And this was an awakening. Oh, it's a global awakening. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. We need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be. You don't want to be anywhere else. Shout out to all the sharers and carers. People have been clocking from the jump. We salute you and thank you very much for joining us again. Our sponsors, the mighty GK Nifty Heads, have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hot Awards Summer 2024. It's a UK hip hop day. It's a very special day. But for a lot of us, this is life. Original London style is the book from South System and Beyond of what. Uh, UK hip hop came to be in the early days, informative days, before your drum and bass and your, your jungle and your grime music. There were some purveyors. Uh, we have the author of Original London Soul, Giuseppe Inside the Place. And uh, to my right, your left, is a gentleman I give esteemed pleasure of having on the podcast. The original, the Dargan Dapper, the Mr. MC Mello in the house. <laughs> Just seven, a pleasure to see you. Pleasure brother. to be here. Yes, what a trip, eh? Uh -huh. I mean, I don't even I don't even know where to begin with the book to be honest. I mean this is this is foundational stuff. Giuseppe, let's just get into this. This this is foundation stuff that really explains how UK hip hop came to be what it was of its time, that, that emergence and the merging of sound. Right. And as you said, it's foundational stuff that I wrote but only because I had the support of all the pioneers mm -hmm. who created like MC Mello here, mm -hmm. <laughs> who created that scene. So this book is mainly an oral history. I interviewed uh, lots of people. At the end, uh, this book is uh, uh, composed by more than 30 voices wow. that all together, I craft mm -hmm. <laughs> those interviews all and cut and paste mm -hmm. them all together in order to create um, an oral history explaining uh, at the beginning, how uh, the first cultural products mm. coming from the U.S. Mm. were hitting the mind, the heart and the mind mm. of these young te teens in the 80s yeah. here in London, and how those very um, first bits and pieces coming in different ways, whether records, whether videos, later on films and uh, books, um, were... Uh, creating, we're like a virus that <laughs> little by little but steadily were conquering the mind of the UK kids but of kids all mm -hmm. around the world, Italy, mm -hmm. where I'm from, included. And so starting, starting from there, I started to, starting from there, I uh, had the chance to speak to uh, people who would explain me not only what I understood because these books comes after 20 years of researching, studying, and interviewing in the US. So I've been doing these oral histories on the 70s, 80s, interviewing who was who from the Bronx, the 70s in the Bronx till uh, the, golden, uh, the golden age in the mid, till the mid 90s, mm -hmm. and I did this. And while I was at an event here in London at the Vibar, um, ah. 
many years ago, this event was called, it was um, a producer competition, and it was called King of the Beats, organized by uh, our, Pre- Pre- our yeah, friend... Pretty Pretty yeah. Kelsey. We all know Pritt. him, one of the hardest men working yeah. in hip hop. Mm-hmm. And he had invited Mikey D, Mikey D from the LA mm. Posse. Wow. And while I was interviewing him, because I was doing my book on the 80s, I was talking about uh, competition, rap competition. And in 1989, he won the new seminar, the new music seminar battle as an MC. Mm-hmm. And while I was doing this interview, um, I remember that uh, I was listening to what happened in this battle, and the day after, I was talking on the phone with Mello about that battle, and he told me I was there with the Covent Garden crew. And that, for me, was a really pivotal moment, because um, till now we have always seen U.S. Mm. raps as the dominant, but in over 30 years, there are um, uh, hip hop scene virtually everywhere mm-hmm. around the world. So for the first time I said, let's see the impact of all these cultural products, all these artists, all these records that have been interviewing, studying, mm-hmm. researching for 20 years in the US. What was the impact mm-hmm. in Europe? And then um, I started working on the UK because it was, let, let me say, it was a bridge for the language. Mm-hmm. While all the other countries as a, a barrier, which was the language, the language yeah. here, this barrier wasn't really present. And then there were many other things historical, historically and culturally that was linking uh, the UK to the US. Mm. And then I understood to Jamaica and to Africa. And to, to link all this cultural tradition coming from the African diaspora. And talking to Mello, that was, uh, everyone listening to this can say, you could have thought about it before. Yes, probably yes. But that for me was the, 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 the crucial moment, the pivotal moment where I said, okay, let's turn 180 degrees the, the perspective and let's see what was happening in the same years mm. in Italy, in the UK. And mm. then I focused on London because I had the chance through Mello, through um, uh, DJ Pogo, through uh, DJ Devastate Rodney, mm-hmm. to not only to meet and interview them, but through them to meet interviews, wow. interview a lot of the pioneers. It was like a virus, wasn't it? It okay. landed. Mello, it affected everybody. It affected everybody. Yeah. Let's talk, Mello, let's talk about that, that, that sudden impact of hip-hop landing in the UK. Mm. Well, first of all, I want to add, like, some of what G said, I didn't, prop- I didn't fully know, right? So this was, this is, I'm hearing some little intricate, little new things as well, which is brilliant to know, you know mm. what I mean? But, um, yeah, it... It hit us like a killer virus, like it laid us all low, right? Mm-hmm. It like put us all <laughs> down, and then, you know, we had to get up from that, and uh, that virus, uh, it changed all our antibodies, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Real talk. Uh, it was incredibly transformative. Like when hip hop, when we first exposed to hip hop, hip hop, I mean, we all come up with rappers' delight. Everybody knew all the lyrics when you're in school, the whole lot. But really, when hip hop hit, it hit maybe different people, different stages at different times, mm. different angles. But one of the main ones that hit everybody in the same kind of time would be Buffalo Girls and Planet Rock, um, you know, from Afropoint Bar and the Soul, Soul Solid Force. So when that happened, like, I'm from Battersea, like, Rodney P, Moni Love, Kamas Swift, there's just tons of us are from Battersea, mm-hmm. right? And so Battersea is a flex like either into the sound system and the reggae, reggae, reggae music and and all of and that side of things, or you're a soul led boogie boy kind mm-hmm, of thing, right? Mm-hmm. You know, the soul music, right? And you're funk. So many of us grew up in getting the best of of both of those things. So when the hip hop hit, like you have the you you you're hearing the rappers and the MCs, which we are familiar with because of sound system and reggae music. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing, just different accent, same energy, same type of man and woman that's, that's spitting. 
the same vibe, the same environment, the same speakers, the same little red light, you know what I mean, little green light. Mm -hmm. The same gully faces up in the place looking at the man's <laughs> like me. But you understand, you're Don't tread my shoes. everybody's gully face because right now we're in this environment and, and things is popping off that you don't know what's coming. You don't know... You don't know the new the, what record's gonna come new that you ever heard. You don't know what the MC is gonna come with that you never heard. But everybody's there expecting some magic, something new, and and that keeps you coming back as well because mm. you come with that expectation, right? Mm. But it was fulfilled, man. You had oh. fulfillment, man. People delivered because this was some proper heart music, some power thing. This is coming from people's soul, and like because of the whole reggae sound system thing, you're talking about when it comes to reggae music and Jamaican culture. You you're talking generations mm -hmm. so it's deep rooted yeah. in the blood and soul so when people come to deal with music they mean it it ain't a fad man it, yeah. it's something real that you dedicate your life to people are dead over this music mm -hmm. they love for this music and people people come and bring life over this love of this music so this is a real something when the hip hop came we recognised real straight away we recognised the dedication we recognised the fact that these kids is going on road on lino on concrete going outside and they don't give a damn what you think. <laughs> it's rebel, this is a rebel culture, it's some rebellion music as well. And this was an awakening, I know it's a global awakening, hmm. but different people on the planet Without was catching question. that awakening at different points, right? It, it, it's still a surge that's building up waves, building up to become a tsunami and wipe out everything, <laughs> which is what it did yeah. and what it still does. I mean, and all of the things that have come from 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 the culture itself, right? But 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 the hip hop it, in its intrinsic form, you know, uh, you know, there's writers, graffiti writers over here, same in the states, but over here who have died from mm -hmm. the third rail. Mm -hmm. They went out to the yards, police chased them, and they're dead. Step on the rail, got electrocuted. Yeah, you got you got mans out here who their dedication to music. And production of that music and, and DJing are going around carrying their records at places where people want to rob them of their records, <laughs> right? Yeah. They want to come and take their, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like people meant what they're dealing with, they dedicate their life to what they're dealing with. And, and I look at that and I say, that taught people dedicate whatever you're doing in your life, do it with that level of intensity. Mm. That, you know what I mean? I speak like this because people have to sometimes recognize that, yeah, just the music. This is the this is the culture. This is the art form, right? But from that has grown, developed human beings mm -hmm. who have to live in this world, interact in this world, impact this world, and make a difference in their life and what's surrounding them. And I think that hip hop culture it 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 stared and 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 showed people like yo here. Is a direction you can take with whatever you want to do, but do it with this energy. Mm. So, like when it comes to the breaking, the popping, even the graffiti, the MC and the DJ, you had to be doing it with excellence and do it a lot to learn the craft. Yeah. People are putting in how many man hours is man putting in a week, a month, let alone a year? You think about it. You didn't care about anything else. No, it was the art form, it, dedication. You doing, you do a thing enough hours, you become a master at what you're doing, right? Yeah. So you had masters who were fifteen. <laughs> and 16, right? Yeah. They're masters, man. But they're still kids. Mm. And it was a cheap to enter culture. You didn't have to have a lot. You didn't could just come on in. Yeah. Even Lionel. <coughs> we go to the carpet shop and ask them for their throwaway Lionel or whatnot. And they thought, <laughs> like, they must be thinking, oh, how quaint these little youths. Mm -mm. Little Lionel. It's only going to go in the bin. Take it. What do you want to do with it? Nothing. Spin around on it. <laughs> what? Yeah, we want to spin around it. Look, let's show him. Oh, good, you know? It's better than yeah. being out and, yeah. you know, robbing yeah. and and getting in the badness. Like, this was, this was one of those truly amazing distractions. How, <laughs> how was, um, yeah, damn right, and it's kept me yeah. <laughs> captivated for decades. Um, uh, <coughs> uh, let's explain the landscape mm. of London of its time. Um, the politics, the um, the... The ground. What was it? What was the? What was the feel like for a young person at that time? Man, okay. So you're talking Thatcher's time, first of all. Yeah. Right. So, just cuts everywhere. If people think they got cuts now, I mean, 
maybe it's the same, but back then, hmm, remember, there's no internet. You, you want to make a phone call, you got to go to a phone box or from your house. Hmm. So, so communication was more hand-to-hand, face-to-face, right? You, you, you know, you arrange the time, go somewhere, whatever. Now, we didn't know anything about internet, so this is how we communicate, you work around it. Mm-hmm. I'm saying this first because it had to show you how much more people had to be physically connected with each other mm-hmm. to get things done. Because you had to tell someone mm. directly, right? I'll give an example. Warehouse parties are kicking off. Uh, you ain't got mobile phones in them early days, so how do you know? <laughs> You've got pirate radio stations mm. telling you, right, it's, you know, um, we're going to be going down at uh, Hoxton Square or this warehouse at this place. And it got to the point where police were listening to all the pirate stations, so all the pirate DJs Whoa. had to give they give a fake address, right? You give a fake address, the police are watching that place. You've got a few men and women scattered around. People turn up. What's going on? It's over down there. You know what I mean? Right, right, by um, Old Street. Da, 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 da. Everyone's like, cool. You tell everyone else, go about your business. Get down there, 2,000 people, no police. Wow. Right? You just had to work your thing. So around the Thatcher situation, around that era, the other thing that happened is people were more together. There was more love. There was more... Uh, 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 we know... Unification. Yeah. Mm. It was more unific. All of us. And if you were into the mus- a particular music genre... And you were in it, you know the people then. Like we spoke about the thing called a scene, yeah? Music scene, hip hop scene. Mm. I was just thinking about it the other day. And it was you're 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 in that scene if you're seen. Mm. You couldn't be in there and be remote because you couldn't. You had to be in. Yeah. You had to be tasting it, feeling it. You had to be in there. And if you were seen, then you're in the scene. Simple as that. But being in the scene meant you're dedicated yeah, to the scene. Yeah, I get you. Right? So the other thing was, you know, all the cuts. So all the youth clubs was, was getting cut. All kind of youth services was getting cut. Everything was getting cut. And you understand that now with the cuts, this is the cuts of the cuts of the cuts. Mm-hmm. When Thatcher came, she was the first to do those kind of cuts. So it's, it was devastating everybody. Wow. Like everyone's broke. So it started there. Yeah, really, honestly, because... Up now, if this is a four, this is a forty-year yeah. experiment, right? Right. Of a, 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 a <clears throat> neoliberal economics and started with the winter of discontent <laughs> because the, of the cuts in, yeah. and the privatization and yes. uh, the cuts, especially uh, for the youth in the arts. Yes. And in, hmm. in, in, in what was the main thing supporting the youth in mm. those right. days? And this is important to understand that, like <laughs> them days, there Britain was much more racist as far as the system goes, yeah. systemic, and prejudice. Mm-hmm. So they look on the little black youths, really, like a nothing. In many ways, this is sad, right? But in many ways, a lot of the black youths were contributing to the economy because they were helping to pay the wages of judges, barristers, lawyers, police, mm prison officers, the ones who drive you from the court mm-hmm. to the prison. You know what I mean? Yeah. The newspaper journalists want to write the stories, but it seemed to us that none of them was trying to address the problems, right? Because when you have poverty and you have nothing, you you have to eat. And so sometimes to eat, people like to, as you say, nyam other people, like, mm-hmm. I have to eat that, I have to eat that person, because like, I'm hungry. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what hip hop did when it came, for many of us, it took that hunger and that starvation wow. and said, mm. feast on this, mm. feast on this culture, feast on this new thing that can satiate and fill your belly. New planet, a whole yeah. new planet. A whole new world, brother. That we, uh, and we're coming in at an age, the age of transformation the age of growth, realisation, the age of discovery. Mm-hmm. And that also includes the discovery of your own self, the discovery of your ability, the discovery of what you can actually achieve if you go for it. Mm. And so if someone told me before I seen it, a human can spin on their head like 
tens and tens of times. <laughs> I'd have told him that like, uh, all manner of cuss there, Clark. Like, what kind of stupidness <laughs> you're talking about? Till I saw a man do it. And I'm like, wow. It's like, ding, mm. possibilities. Mm. Right? Open the ground. Yeah, and then you start to realise, yo, man, I'm a vessel full of possibilities. Let me see what's possible. Mm. And that's what the kids were doing in everything. That's what the government feared. Because mm. imagine, if these B-boys and B-girls with this mentality like that were to say, let me look at politics. Let me go beyond all expectations. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me apply this mentality yeah, 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 yeah. to it. Man, are you allowed to swear on this? It's your podcast, sir. You can do they were shitting themselves out. <laughs> okay? Properly filling their pants, mm. bricking it. Because they knew something that we hadn't realised, right? Which is... We're just as much as yeah. Michael Hessentine or Hessentine or any of these people we see in run the country. They're human, we're human. And we do things that they could never do. Exactly. And they don't value it, but we do. So we start to value power. ourselves. Yeah. You understand? And that's the power. That's what hip-hop has mm. given us, right? Boy. So then you started to see stuff getting shut down, shutting down clubs. Shutting. If we was to take out Lionel, we used to go down Charing Cross, right? And the Charing Cross train station, tube station, there's a part where you've got tiled, tiled kind of, uh, these small bricks, but they're tiled, they're tiled and they're shiny. Mm -hmm. and a bit slippery. But, you know, you've got grouting in between. And then you've got this glass all the way along, like about 10 metres. But it's like kind of for a shop, so it's dark, mm -hmm. like glass, but it's reflective. So we'll be down there popping, breaking, because there's a mirror that we can see, and there's lying on there's the floor. <laughs> the police would always come. We'd have to run. We're not harming anybody. Check this out. Some people be tagging up down there, right? Uh, One time this guy came, was clean, his job was to clean the tags off. And someone came, I don't remember who it was. But you see tags there, you know, everybody, man, like, even like Mo D and everybody, Mo 2, like, everyone was down there, right? Chrome Angels, like, everybody would be there. I remember this happened. It's mad that his job was to clean off these things. And you know, man get a little bit guilty, guilty. Mm -hmm. some of this or something like, bro, you know what I mean? We're sorry you gotta do that. The guy turned around and he said, What are you apologizing for? He says, You guys putting them your these things on the wall keeps me in a job. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm designated eating. tag man. When, when everybody else is losing their jobs on the dole, it's like, yo, I got work. Yeah. And it's, it's like, this stuff looks great. What does it mean, though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real talk, man. I was working today yeah. down there, and yeah. I remember that you, t you told me these were for B-boys, these were our uh, school dance, because yeah. we had all the glasses, and we yeah. could see our dance move, yeah. uh, because reflect, and you could yeah. see also your curly hair and, <laughs> and, and everything. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting, this, because you didn't say, but... Back then, you, you had to be in the scene to be seen. Yeah. And as far as I understood, most of the pioneers, they started uh, practicing more than one element. Yes. Like the very MC Mello. I had, I, we had a, a challenge, you know? I discovered his name. What was his art name before really? MC Mello? Because he was a popper, right? Yes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Dancer first. Yeah, and we were, we were good, man. We had a group. We had a few. <laughs> Some funny names now if you look at them, right? But our first crew, it's probably because it rhymed, yeah? But 52 Flash Crew, right? And this was Battersea. This was Battersea, Patmore Estate, you know, Dynamo, Reza, you know, Patmore Estate. And then you got like Plow Road, you know, uh, man. Um, uh, 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 I can't forget my guy's name, man. We were just a crew, eclectic crew. Like, for example, some were from Chile, mm -hmm. others were like from white English, mixed race, Jamaican background. But all of us are Londoners, and we're representing, we're representing our hood. Mm -hmm. That's 52 Flash Crew. And then <laughs> we joined up like uh, uh, Bionic. Yeah, Bionic was wow. a breaker and a popper Ooh. first, right? Bionic, Basil, Clive, uh, uh, KV. <laughs> Cap them coming. Get these Googles K going, you know what it yeah, is. Yeah, Google Man or KV and Lloyd. These are, these are some of the most amazing breaks. And we had that crew and we call ourselves like SAS, um, you know. And uh, yeah, man, we represent. And then went on to a crew we called Truly Unique. 
It's Mark Monero. Look up the name wow. Mark Monero. He's quite a famous actor. Yeah. Darnell. I don't know where Darnell is. Darnell was like small, slim, white brother, just, 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 just dangerous, just a dangerous cat. <laughs> when he start dancing, Basil and myself, we were called Truly Unique. And we modeled ourselves over them kind of Oakland and West Coast, LA man, because that's the kind of popping and locking we yeah, did. Yeah. So we had the zoot suits on and all the rest of it. And that, that was our flex, man. And we, we, we did a lot of work and, you know, it was great. But again, that comes down to the fact that everybody pushed everybody to be the best they could be. Mm. And when we speak about that scene, you didn't have to be active. Mm -hmm. In an art form. There were socialites and people yeah. that were moving and shaking. They probably yeah. would have gone on to be like marketeers or something like that. Yeah, the champion or even in you were just industries. down because you were cool. Yeah. You were just down hanging out. You, just, you, you were there regularly. Mm. You know what I mean? It, 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 it brought people in, man. But you know, also, if you, you were too defective, <laughs> you're going to get pulled up on that as well. Yeah, yeah. Defective. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some serious defects. Yeah. In there. There's always some defects out there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, fantastic. Um, yeah. It must have been one hell of a journey, G, to... I mean, what we're talking about now, you know, could readily be excerpts in the book, to, to, to forage and find and get those inner details from characters like Mello and God knows how many people. I mean, is it, it's here. It's here, you can get it online. But it was also fun, yeah. fun and fun, because um, with most of these people... I created a relationship. It was just not uh, an interview, and that's it. Mm. I needed. I, I got what I needed, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Mello came to my squat in Italy. He performed on the stage with me during a presentation of one of my book because I don't do frontal presentation. There were, uh, whatever I was talking about, the golden age, mm -hmm. there was uh, a DJ translating into music. And then when it came, when it came the, the time for the UK. We had MC Mello rocking the stage directly, directly in front of uh, of my people. So wow. yes, it's a, it has been a hell of a journey. I started. We were talking yesterday. I started in 2009. It's a 15 years journey, 15 and years I have journey. hours yeah. and hours of recording, mm. audio recording, and then as. For, for a time, we wanted to turn this research into a documentary film. We have also hours and hours of video recording wow. of uh, these people. For example, um, may rest in peace, we have a two hours and a half interview with um, MC Duke. <laughs> uh, he sent, me, he sent <laughs> me some original pictures Maybe you've seen them, but they were never published. Okay, he sent me some original pictures because he was supporting this project, and one of two of them are mm. in the in the project. So, as I told you, it was a long, long journey, mm. and uh, and at the end, I had also to have a support for a, for a, for a, from a university because when the when I understood that we made a big mistake with the documentary, and because we put in so many archive and footage material that we couldn't pay the rights. Okay, I didn't want to lose all the interviews I did uh, and all those years of travels and, and efforts, even economical <laughs> efforts, uh, because we have been doing everything independently, okay? And um, so at a certain moment, I had to find someone helping me. And as I told you, I've been working and researching in the States. Mm -hmm. I, I was already going to speak in, um, at panels in US universities. And so I had a few connections, and one of these connections, uh, whose name is Marcelenia Morgan, and was the director of the Harvard Hip Hop Archive, uh, which was sponsoring the NAS Fellowship. NAS, mm -hmm. since wow. 2013, mm -hmm. is sponsoring people to go and study at Harvard and to bring on their projects. So I, I applied without thinking of, I, I don't have any chance of winning. And not only I won, there were just three uh, positions. Not only I won, but I was the first one. And I, I, I was immediately um, choose to be a NAS fellow for the year 2018 and 19. So I went there, I was, for the first time in my life, I had an office and I was paid to research and, and write. Oh. Okay. So could you, good, good gig if you can get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still on, it's still on, if you want. And you don't need um, 
for the Nas Fellowship, you don't need um, uh, you don't need to be a doctor. Uh, you can even if you if you get a degree, you can you can go there. Beside me, uh, there was Aquana Ru, who is a spoken word and rap artist, mm-hmm. and there was Pablo um, Herrera, who is a producer. Actually, if you like uh, Cuban hip hop and you go and dig the early uh, stages of Cu- uh, Cuban hip hop, he was the one who produced all wow. all all the uh, tracks also because he was the only one to have an MPC on the island so <laughs> he, he was <laughs> but, but we were a, a trio of mm. they were artists I was a writer but we were put in a position to do our research mm-hmm. to awesome. be paid and I had all the books all the resources of Harvard ready for me wow. right. that's incredible and the moment I didn't as, I didn't uh, want a, an assistant because I could have an assistant a student that would come and work with me they gave me the amount of money to fly to the UK and do more interviews Jeez. so if it wasn't for that external support it's the first time in my life but it was highly highly needed in that mm. moment I don't know if I would end up Uh, with this book mm. or if this book would be present now maybe in a few years or uh, mm. it would no, it's a life's the journey making. it's a yes. life's journey 15 oh. years I mean, we, we became all together yeah I mean <laughs> so speak for yourself <laughs> you know, I'm learning a lot man I'm learning a lot I didn't even you must have told me but I didn't remember that oh, that's heavy man that's amazing somebody believed in what you're doing man and believed in your levels Mm. And, and invested in that and look what's come out of it man yeah but most of the times you know it happens here it happens in many countries is always someone outside your yeah. reality believing in you and you you <laughs> think it twice why can't it be in Milan in London mm. or somewhere else yeah but this is the thing with with hip hop is it takes you on a journey it's almost like this you know here's your comfort blanket <laughs> here's your skills mm. here's your here's your community mm. and look over there is your journey Go get and all you've got to do is like not only mass amount of self-belief but trust the process it's true. that this it's almost like a religious you know it is isn't it it's like a, it's an incredible journey. you know you know something it's <laughs> like, like a so, religious is, conversion I mean that is that's serious right because what you've just explained in a way like Rodney P was saying the same kind of thing in, in the movie in documentary and he he he, he, he He caveated it. He ca- the caveat was on top, like chair on the top was, uh, we were unstoppable. Mm. You could not stop us. We're unstoppable. Mm. And the documentary, the move is called Unstoppable. And Rodney just said it perfectly right. Boom. You more or less repeat that, right? Because when you're younger, this one, this one of the things about the power of youth, mm. right? You believe you're you're impregnable, man. You believe that. You're super powered, and you are. Mm-hmm. You've, you, you've not learned failure. You've not become jaded. You have that power of youthful energy mm. and a drive. What do you mean I can't do that? I don't know I can't do that, so I can do that. Yeah. And, and uh, like you said, when you get older or you're more experienced, there is that part where you have to get to the point where you trust the process. Mm-hmm. You, you, you have to plant you have to till your soil you have to plant those seeds and you have to water and 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 nurture them okay and bring them plants up till they start giving you fruits it's a whole process to do that mm. and and and, and a, a farmer has to trust the process of sun and soil and rain to bring about a harvest mm-hmm. you know what I'm so When you're when when you're when you're young, you're just powering through. You're doing your thing. That's why that's why we all got ripped off. Mm. Because hunger. Yeah, it was not so much about trusting the process because we was younger. Mm. It was about trusting and belief in what you're doing. That's the conviction side. Yeah. And as you get on and get certain knocks, the conviction can sway. You have to trust the process, and you have to sometimes go through that process of, of, of rebirth or. Um, Enlivenment, like coming to the remembrance that no, 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 mm. this ain't failing you. Mm. You can do this. You're mm-hmm. born to do this. You got the skills to do this. Have the conviction to just go ahead and do this. Mm. And you know that's one of the struggles as you get on and stuff like that. 
and everything we're talking about can be clearly mirrored or reflected oh, in yeah. just life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Life can be intense, and when you hit a certain age range of uh, this music hmm. entertainment world, no matter how far up the peck and order you have, depending on what it is, whether it's acting or, you know, script writing or, you know, music and, you know, spitting bars, you, uh, it gets hard, harder, 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 mm -hmm. but then that you remind yourself, and I think a lot of it is because it comes back to when you're a youth, when you're a kid, those things you, you get off of when you was a kid, you still get off of now, That's so you right. go back to, re go back to source. Right. And then you realise that it doesn't matter if you're sketching a piece mm. or whether you're playing to, you know, 30,000 people at a, mm. a concert. Mm. It's still one and the same. You take as much attention on that piece as you mm. do going on stage. It, it Absolutely. It makes no difference because you Absolutely. believe in the culture, the thing that takes you Absolutely. back to source, you know. I want to say another thing. It might sound a bit metaphysical or something. No, no, like, no but This is real, right? <clears throat> the, the sketches you're doing at 17 and the sketches you're doing at 47, mm. or the rhymes you're writing at 17 and the rhymes you're writing at 47, or DJing anything, right? It's like, <clears throat> it should be better because you're more skilled, more experienced. But to me, this is the important thing. That person who wrote at 17, with all of that energy and all of them vibes, uh, I don't believe that someone's soul ages. Mm. I believe the soul is kind of eternal. Yeah. All right? We age, our body ages, our brain mm. ages, the experience changes, but the essence of the human being, that essence that can animate us or drive us, it's the same now. What happens is we kind of get in the way of ourselves <laughs> and we can we can block up that energy. And you know who you are as well. <laughs> You're talking to yourself. And we can block up that yeah. energy, right? And, and, and that's one of the things about music and stuff. It can it can release the blockage. Mm. You know what I mean? Really can. Art can can kick those stumbling blocks out of the way and remind you again of the pure essence. Yes. And people go out, people go out clubbing or whatever, and they just want to go back, go out. If they want to just dance, in some ways, it can be a kind of glorification, a kind of worship of something higher. You know what I mean? Mm. All your problems, all your griefs, you leave them outside and you go a place. You know, when you see Rasta man, like proper sounds, proper mm. Rasta, bingy. Mm -hmm. Them man there is like, when the sound system's playing, certain man, you go Shaka and certain other. Them man is like, stay out the way, man. Them man is in full, full yes. worship, man. Yeah. Locks is flying. They got the beam down on their yeah, heads. They man. are me Them in man meditation zone. On some higher yes. level thing through the music, man. Yeah. When you see a b-boy jump in a circle and do some stuff, he's on a higher thing for yes. that music. Yes. Certain MCs spitting freestyle, they didn't even think about what they were saying, you're like amazed, they're on a higher thing, it's connection. Mm. Yeah, that's what hip hop, to me, that's one of the main things about hip hop. We were too young to realize it and talk about it. I see, when G is researching this book and like, we're talking, this man asks kind of questions and come with an energy that you start answering and you're answering going, wow, did I just say that? For real? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. For real, you understand? Yeah, yeah. Because the things is coming out and it's, 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 it's in here. Mm -hmm. It's in the documentary. It's in all these hundreds of hours of video and audio that ain't come out yet. Mm. We're all telling this story. And it's profound. Yeah, it's profound. It's a very profound story and history that's captured in this. I'll say to people, look, if you want to know about hip-hop, b-boy, anything like that in the UK, then I'll say, get it, get it. Yes. Get it. But it's a it timeline, isn't it? It deal with that. No. Nah. There's a whole heap of other things. The culture, it deals with the reggae, it deals with all the different kind of art forms, how they linked and connected, how they, uh, you know, infused each other. Mm. And, and I would like just to add one thing mm. that I've told you before. I've been researching for over 20 years in uh, in the U.S. and I never felt the need to get into some system culture. As soon as I came here, mm -hmm. I I understood that I couldn't write anything about UK hip hop without researching and going deep in the history of um, UK 
uh, some system. Mm. Uh, from the day we spoke, we spoke together. For, uh, uh, even when I did interview many other pioneers and uh, and, and and people like Rodney, mm. I want to shout out Rodney. Uh, when the moment he said unstoppable, we were young, stupid, <laughs> energetic, and hip hop was the soundtrack soundtrack to our life, and we were unstoppable. I knew that. Uh, that day, I found the title of the book, <laughs> of the documentary, sorry. I found the title of that documentary. But I wanted to, to tell you this. This is not an encyclopedia of UK rap. You don't have all the names uh, no, by, mm -hmm. by A, B, C, and D. This is what I understood talking to the people who shaped that 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 scene. But going, I, I talked to Mello, I talked to um, Rodney, and all a bunch of other people. But I talked also to the ones who inspired them. Mm -hmm. To Family Quest, who was commanding mm, the stage at Spats, and 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 you told me, I mm -hmm. I understood that most of the uh, early MC were all in love with Mr. <laughs> MC, <laughs> the first uh, female the first in, uh, MC yeah. in the UK, and she was uh, rapping with. Uh, a crew of black guys who were before known as Jafrica, hmm. a, a sound system crew who exposed to hip hop turned into a, a, an hip hop group, Family Quest MCs. And they were the, one of the earliest crew to, to release records and to participate uh, to big festival like Electro Rock, Fresh 86. They were always, always there. So I, I think that the, the hip hop history in the UK is particularly rich mm -hmm. because the, the UK is uh, culturally rich and some systems are, like are a part system, of so. this tradition. Mm -hmm. And when I was in Brixton, when I was in other areas here in, in, in London, we were talking about uh, some system, the Caribbean influence. Well, we weren't just talking. I could see it. I mm -hmm. could smell it. I could taste it. I could feel it. I could see the colors of the of the of the of the mm -hmm. uh, indumentaries of the of the clothes. So, I understood v really yeah. firsthand what they were telling yeah, me within the environment, within yes. the environment where the music comes from, which is exactly what you get when you go to New York, same as you get in LA, same as you get in Paris. Absolutely. You know. I think I think though, I think one of the unique things about about the UK, about England, the major cities. Oh especially in England. But for now, I just focus on London. One of the main things was, this, as I said before, the sound system culture, reggae sound system culture, meant that when hip hop came, it was going to be different here. Mm. Once we start to, once we start to find our, 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 our feet, and like, everyone first start rapping, like trying to rap like Americans with American accents, right? And certain man could do that real good. But like, I did like, Moni rap like with American accent because she learned to MC in the States when she was at school over there. Right. As a youth, mm -hmm. right? And, and <clears throat> Rodney, he had an American accent too. But we're talking about we're 14, 15. Mm. Soon man start to get the confidence in what they're doing. So... London Posse coming out, making sure it's in the name. We're London, we sound London, we talk London, but and the rest of you. Demon Boys too. Demons as well. Um, um, hijack. Like, yeah. like, you see, everyone's coming out. Like, I come out, the first song we released was in 1988, but we recorded it in 87, first time in the studio. Little American y, little English y, London y. But, you know, my next tune after that, you know exactly where I'm from. <laughs> and that's what we dealt with. And I'm going to tell you right now, for me, a lot of my style when I first come and I'm hitting it, because before we made records, we were tearing microphones up. In every place there was a microphone and human beings and speakers. Because <laughs> I said with the sound system, right? You had hip-hop sound systems and sound systems playing break beats, hip-hop, uh, um, R&B, like rare groove, as well as the odd reggae tune here and there. We're talking like Soul to Soul, yeah. Beat Freak, uh -huh. right? Like Beat Freak, TNT, this is Rebel MC sound, DJ Ron, uh -huh. right? Main attraction, you got Imperial Mixes on that, on there. You got Rockbox, man, like Rockbox with the original yes. hip hop sound, the original man, them getting in the warehouse, uh -huh. right? Like there's a warehouse, when I have a warehouse party, party, nutriment, DJ Nutriment's like, how are we gonna do this? 
we need to get the keys for the warehouse, right? How are you going to get the keys for a warehouse to have a party over mm-hmm, a mm-hmm. weekend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get one of these white brothers, put him in a suit, goes to the estate agent that's like got the keys for the warehouse. He says he wants to get the keys to be able to mm. o- look over the place over the weekend mm-hmm. as the time's got free. He's got the key. People trust each other more. <coughs> in the 80s, man got the key, gets into the warehouse. Everyone, the man that bring the sound system in. And by the way, Rockbox was using Gremlin sound system, I think, right? Get in there. And like before you know it, like I said, the word got out. And the place is ram. So this is all sound system set up, man. The four-face speakers over there in the mm. corner. You know, you've got the tweeters. Got, it, it's set up Mastermind complete. Mastermind sound. All Mastermind. Them. All of these guys, all of them, with the sound system that's dealing with the b-boy and mm. the hip-hop, the break beats, the rare grooves. You know, and then on the, the people DJing, you've got Mad Hatter Trevor, you've got, like, yeah. you know, Femi Femme, and, you know, everybody's DJing, they're playing the breaks. Yeah. And so I'm turning up at Soul to Soul, right, as a you, and I'm like, Jazzy B, yeah, on the mic. And I'm on that mic, and I'm rocking that place. And people don't know. They're just dancing. Because the vibes we've got, like, you don't oh, want to stand God, out. I love the it. vibes, not on the stage. And then people turn around and they realise. So next thing you know, everyone over there is dancing, but these ones all here looking like, the fuck, is that you? Is, is, is that you? Right? And we're doing our thing. Sound system give us all the... Many of us was our first break. Yeah. Break through the sound system flex. It's so mm, key. important and key. And it's one of the main things that made UK different from France, mm-hmm. and Germany, B-Boys, and Japan, yeah. and, 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 and United States of America. Mm. It was that whole Jamaican mm. reggae sound system ethos that we could replicate. We could replicate that with hip-hop. Oh, love that it. was our unique, that's the unique selling point that we had here. Wow. And, and this is the bitch thing about it. Instead of the, in, the music industry embracing that huh. and seeing this as a unique homegrown thing, they tried to shut us down. Hmm. Yeah. And hence people had to go independent. You had to keep the pirate radio stations going because hip hop became rebel music. Reggae music was rebel music. But hip hop, Grew so big, it was seen as true but rebellious. Yeah. Because our thing was like, Sunday no, mm. fuck you, we're doing mm. this. And I tell you, the, the state doesn't like nobody telling it no, mm. especially back then. See? Mm. But we tell them no till the cows come home, and when the cows leave home, we still tell them no. And we're saying yes to us. And that's the empowerment mm. that was going on. And you see that stuff mm. in this book. 50 years old, you're in the arts arcade right now, and how, my, oh my, how things are changing, <laughs> developing and moving. This is the book, Original London Style. That's what it is. Giuseppe, any last words, my brother? Yes, I want to shout out the translator, <laughs> who, is, who is, no, I cannot do uh, a presentation of this book without shouting out DJ Leva 57, who yes. will warm up the people for tonight's event. Uh, tonight's event, yes, wow. which you'll be, yeah, you'll be late in coming on this, but we're going to be recording that as well, so that'll be coming in due course as well, uh, depending on when you're listening to this and watching this, but yeah. And it, as, it, as, it, as you said, it's been a, a life yeah. journey, and it's been a rich journey, which uh, uh, made me... Uh, a better man, let's yeah. say, if, even if older. <laughs> a better man, 15 Slightly. years, of, 15 years of research. And on the sound system tip, big shout out to Tipperary, big shout out to Ragged yeah. Twins, big shout out to Sweet Ragged Ari, Navigate. Uh, I mean, you know, the list is endless. Big uh, up Sweet Ari, man. Sweet, yeah, yeah. Daddy um, Freddy. Yeah. Talking about this, when I ask when I ask uh, about Money Med to Rodney P, yeah. he told me he wanted to uh, duplicate in a hip hop yeah. vibe, in a hip hop way, inner cities by uh, a, a DJ from uh, Saxon Sound System. Mm. Mm. And so, he, one of the earliest um, homegrown tracks, okay, when I asked what was his, uh, the inspiration for this track, it wasn't hip hop, it was mm. a reggae sound system, mm. Saxon Sound System. They were doing fast chat, so it was a homegrown mm. version of uh, reggae, and they were doing it, and they did it here, 
and they exported everywhere. That's they went the shit. even to that's Jamaica. And that's why I think it's so powerful, <laughs> this story and the, the thing that pushed me really to write this book and uh, was the fact that with such a rich history, there was no, nothing, no research, nothing published on those early years, on the 80s and the pop scene in London mm. or in the UK in the 80s. I did focus on London because I couldn't um, uh, write uh, a comprehensive uh, research mm. uh, such uh, one considering uh, all the UK. Mm -hmm. Even with London, it was a long research, and I think the result yeah, is pretty good. Yes, very good. This is this is the result of some extreme, extreme field research, and we've been interviewed in the past for decades for magazines, and you talk, you know, and you've got X amount of words in the magazine with mm. the photos, okay? Mm. But here is where we really spoke. And not just spoke, like we're speaking and discovering stuff while we're speaking and it's been documented. Mm -hmm. So there's things that each of us had been saying that in a way was never before said. That's and so it's documented. Sick. And I want to add to this, right? I, look, I want everybody to just read it. <laughs> and when I say everybody, I, I also mm -hmm. mean, I want, because this, this is the danger of like a lot of the UK B-boys and hip hop people not reading this book. Mm -hmm. But I, I die behind this book, mm -hmm. right? It's like, this is our story. I'll say, read it. To the grime artists, the jungle, drum and bass, the reggae artists, they're all fans. I'm telling you, man, check the book out because it's also your story. You will see mm. yourself in this. And I think it will enrich people who, who read that book. It's gonna enrich them. Thank you. Yeah. There you go. Forwarded by the man himself. You know, it's original London style, Killer Keller podcast. Big shout out Giuseppe, my brother. Thank you. Thank you for the chance and, and the opportunity. Yes. Mellow in the building. <laughs> Come on. Very good. Family tree. Uh, Killer Keller podcast, Allah, in was out of fashion, serves you all right. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. All right? You stay lucky, don't talk to one, I wouldn't. Easy. <laughs> <laughs>